What's going on there guys? Good afternoon, good evening to some out there. It is the Earth Master here on this Sunday, November 13th, 2022. Uh, it is about 2.15 p.m. California time out here along the West Coast. And a real quick congratulations on our member drawing, uh, Denzian of the Ages, our lucky newest member winner on the channel. We do those monthly drawings every month, by the way. So step on up there if you want to win some prizes. A 3.8 earthquake into the South America region. Continuing the uh, latest activity here across the South America region. Peru Chile Trench, awfully busy lately in the past couple days. As well as quite a bit of major, major adjustment here along the Tonga area, Fiji Islands region. We're talking a bunch. The only other area that really hasn't shown any significant movement um, is the West Coast, California. Uh, looks like a little bit of activity up around the Cascadia uh, 3.0. Let's go ahead and check out the latest uh, movement here across the region. West Coast lighting up slightly, but uh, all other areas around the Pacific Ring of Fire and adjacent plates have been pretty darn active. A 2.1, the latest quake right off of the san andreas fault system this looks like the park field section i believe uh just off the park field section up here a little bit to the north there we go a 2.1 at nine kilometers deep the latest quake here across the west coast also had some activity uh near the san jose area just offshore this little earthquake uh actually to the west of santa cruz it looks like 2.1 at 7.5 kilometers deep and some scattered activity uh, throughout the remainder of California. A little bit of interesting development here across the Brawley Seismic Zone. Noticing a little migration of some swarming up here across the area of the Brawley Seismic Zone. And then it gets into the southern branch of the San Andreas Fault. We've got to watch this pretty closely because this, I believe, uh, if we can get a good enough swarming in the area, no doubt uh, could trigger the big one down here. This thing's wound up about as tight as it can go. Uh, this is the southern branch of the San Andreas Fault, capable of an 8.1 earthquake down here along this branch, along the southern branch area. Uh, but for now, a little bit of swarming across the Brawley Seismic Zone, kind of a stretching out there towards the Salton Sea. We'll watch that pretty closely. Uh, just a couple small microquakes, but again, going to pay close attention to that region. Northern California, not a whole lot going on. There is our earthquake well off the uh, coast of Oregon. Just shy of the Cascadia Megathrust into the Blanco Fracture Zone. That one coming in, um, looks like a, about an hour or so ago, two hours ago maybe, at 10 kilometers deep. Aside from that, that's about the only listed one here across the Pacific Northwest. Nothing going on across the uh, Intermountain West. Kind of find that hard to believe. Let's go ahead and check out Yellowstone National Park. All right, let's go ahead and do that. The latest, let me refresh this for the latest map. And there's no doubt still activity continuing here across northwest Wyoming there at Yellowstone. This is the last 24 hours here of seismic data showing some activity. Very small microquakes, but activity nonetheless in these little spikes here across the area. And they're mostly confined to the Maple Creek area. All other regions here look pretty darn quiet. Um, I'm not seeing any unusual movement. Uh, we have had a lot of large earthquake activity over the past two days, and some of those signatures uh, will be showing up. For example, uh, right here, that's kind of a larger earthquake signature. I believe that is from the one uh, that kicked off in uh, the Chile area uh, yesterday, the 6.2 that came in. So those seismograph stations will definitely pick it up worldwide. Far as the South America region goes, what do we have? A little bit of activity continuing into the Peru Chile Trench, although a little bit of a migration here up north of Santiago Chile area. 4.4 at 10 kilometers deep. Some movement up here as well near the Argentina area, but underneath Argentina, I should say. 245 kilometers deep for a 4.1. Aftershock activity continuing in this region of Chile, just offshore. And just upstream uh, towards the most locked area in a subduction zone. Uh, this is kind of a yeah, little bit north of where the 9.5 struck back in 1960. 
uh, in that area of Chile, creating the largest earthquake ever recorded in the, the in the world, ever recorded. So, watching that pretty closely there. Uh, into the Caribbean plate here, movement around the Middle America Trench, somewhat elevated, it looks like. A couple fours kicking off there earlier this morning off the coast of Nicaragua, uh, Colombia area. Um, one earthquake way off of the South America region down, or Central America area, off towards the Cocos Ridge region. Of course, you got the Nazca plate and the Coco plate here. A little bit of uh, movement going on around that area. See what we got. Uh, didn't mean to skip way over the central area of the country, but there's not a whole lot going on here in the states uh, in this area. Some movement around Texas and Oklahoma, but very minimal. Nothing going on across the New Madrid zone or the eastern portion of the country. All pretty quiet. Up into the Alaska region, got one earthquake here towards the uh, eh, towards the Cook Inlet. Uh, looks like a 3.1 at 34 kilometers deep. Aside from that, general seismic activity about average across the Aleutian Trench and into the interior portion of Alaska. One earthquake over here in our super duper watch zone. This area here, I say that because it's very capable. Uh, there's enough strain here built up, I believe, for seeing a mega quake uh, in this area of the Kuril Kamchaka Trench. It's been too quiet for all too long. Uh, quite the accumulated slip rate here, yearly slip rate is um, one of the highest areas along the Pacific plate in this zone. Uh, for now, a 5.1 into uh, about the southern end here of the Kuril Kamchaka Trench at 37 kilometers deep. I'll watch that zone. Uh, in Taiwan, seen some activity earlier this morning and late last night. It looks like the latest one, a 4.0. Um, and aside from that, the rest of the Philippine plate here, Filipino plate, Somewhat quiet. Uh, Indonesia area, Java Trench, all pretty quiet as well. We got a 5.2 that kicked off in the Indonesia area, the Java Trench, early this morning, about 7 o'clock. Um, some further deeper activity once again here within the last hour, another 4.9, 595 kilometers deep. We've seen a tremendous amount of movement here, folks, over the last two days or so. Let me pull up the last seven days of activity and man let's start off with the largest magnitudes how's that for one area three sevens two upper sixes and quite a few fives and fours in there as well for basically not over the last week this is pretty much the last um two or three days of activity that's almost unheard of uh, to see this much activity in one confined region with very minimal adjustment here along the western portion of the pacific plate yes we did see activity ramp up along the chile area uh in between all this movement and fiji we had that 6.2 of course uh but man in our general zone of plate movement here uh there's not a whole lot of adjustment in this area there uh, maybe it's getting ready to i know we're getting quite stressed up here around this region we have to be with all the deeper and shallower earthquake activity it's uh, definitely setting up here for something big across the area. And we've seen very minor adjustment along the Kermadec Trench, which is south here of this area. Got to remember when one section of the plate moves up here, deeper and shallower, uh, it, it can only be adding further strain, not only to the west-northwest, but also along this area of the plate. This here uh, kind of goes with the flow, and uh, we haven't really seen too much activity into the uh, Kermadec Trench area as uh, far as large-scale movement goes. Let me check here and see what we got on the globe. Uh, there's that deeper activity coming in now. It looks like there was a couple fours down here around the North Island, New Zealand, and some other deep activity just north of New Zealand here. And that's, uh, I believe that's firmly only adding stress upstream to the area of the Kermadec Trench. So watch this area pretty closely, folks. There's just been way way too much movement here and large scale activity these aren't a bunch of just fours and fives We're talking sevens and upper sixes that's, that's a lot of movement kicking up here in this area so watch the Kermadec trench and the curl kamchaka trench gotta remember these areas that sit up against the western portion of the pacific plate pretty closely watch that watch that zone uh, over here around the himalayas one earthquake from well well north of the himalayas it looks like 
Uh, into the area of China, got a 4.1 coming in early this morning. Iran seen this earthquake from yesterday uh, on the uh, map here, 4.2. And over here around the Mediterranean Sea, we had another earthquake there yesterday, 4.8. Nothing showing up across the Atlantic Ocean for now. Things just, uh, man, just a little on the crazy side, crazy side with all this activity. Uh, the trimmer map last night consisted of just a minimal amount of trimmer, 70 epicenters up north around the Vancouver Island ranges, and man, a little bit a split difference here between the two. Looks like uh, 70 epicenters along the Cascadia. Nothing major going on at all. Uh, volcanic seismicity map, we're going to choose Mount Adams. And uh, this is a, a volcano up here that doesn't have a whole lot of seismograph stations up here, but kind of want to see what they have. As uh, far as data goes, you think this would be well covered, but maybe it's on their least concerned volcano map. Uh, you know, as far as it erupting, everything looks pretty, uh, pretty smooth across the board. Um, looks like there may be a couple small microquakes there. This amplitude's turned uh, down way too much, and it's pretty much squashing anything that's taking place here. Some of this activity could be from these bigger quakes uh, that have happened. In the past couple days there in Fiji, it's kind of hard to tell with this type of setup uh, when the amplitudes are tuned, uh, I would say improperly. But uh, um, yeah, that's just my two cents. And this other graph shows about the same, unless that's the same one I uh, uh, clicked on here. Let me check this red one. They look about the same. Stagman Ridge, Washington. Mount Adams. Uh, this one's a little, yeah, a little bit different. Still doesn't look, <laughs> doesn't look like a normal seismograph should. It just looks a little on the odd side. Um, it's supposed to look something like this. And I say that because you, you see that little wavy line here of the seismograph reading. You know, if you can picture on the, the old style seismograms, um, you know, you get that little needle going across the paper picking up waves and, and earthquakes when they happen. And that kind of looks like earthquake activity there uh, when it's properly tuned. Uh, but for whatever reason, um, it gets untuned and we can't really see it all. So I'm not for sure what's going on. I'm going to mark this one down to keep an eye on, see what's going on with this. Because that's uh, to me, that looks like earthquake activity, doesn't it? That's what we look for on a graph. Uh, for example, Yellowstone National Park here. Let's go over here back to the uh, Yellowstone stations here. And, you know, we see these little spikes. This is just a little bit different, but same digital type of seismograph here. And that's kind of odd. We'll definitely check, uh, keep a close eye on that and see if it uh, gets um, updated or not around the Mount Adams area. Solar weather activity has been um, eh, minimal at best. I know we got 3140, 3141 up there for a potential 90% chance C flare, 40% chance for an M flare, 10% chance for an X flare. Let's go ahead and check their magnetic structure out and see what we got. Uh, of course, it'd be my luck or our luck when uh, these things develop into a massive sunspot and uh, complex instability on the magnetic field and pop off an X flare. And it's kind of directed away from Earth right now. But I don't know if that's going to be the case. Um, we're looking at a couple different areas here. Very complex magnetic structure. I see about four of them up here. Um, and these things could possibly produce uh, an M flare. But we'll watch that pretty closely. Again, any CME that does get blasted off of here from the sun's surface uh, would probably almost uh, be away from Earth uh, with this position of the sunspot these regional sunspots. Uh, there is another sunspot uh, kind of out here. Uh, has it been named yet? Doesn't look like it. it. should be named 3146 once this thing gets uh, once it gets uh, looked at by a professional. We'll see if that uh, does or not. Aside from that, no major coronal holes, folks. Uh, things are green across the board. Unfortunately, not green in the sky, so no uh, greenery up there for the aurora forecast, uh, at least anytime soon, unless something changes there with the uh, activity currently on the sun there with those sunspots. 
All right, folks, I'm going to jump off here. Um, I, uh, <laughs> for the mechanics out here, if, uh, if, you know, if you guys know what a freeze plug is, um, well, I had a freeze plug actually uh, start leaking coolant on my vehicle. Just couldn't figure out where this coolant smell was coming from. A lot of time it's from the radiator, uh, maybe a hose, you know, radiator hose or heater core. Well, I found the source of my little leakage and uh, it's from a freeze plug. And I've never had one of those leak, but I guess they do de deteriorate after a while and uh, develop a little hole. And it's in a little weird spot to where I'm going to have to do a little bit of work and a little bit of el put a little bit of elbow, elbow grease into my mechanic skills here today. So I'm going to be working on that on the side. So mechanic, geologist, YouTuber, all sorts of stuff going on with my portfolio today. All right, folks, we'll catch you guys a little bit later tonight. Uh, yeah, we'll definitely do an update later tonight here around 9 or so. Till then, take care. And again, congratulations to our member winner or monthly drawing winner out there. Take care, folks. Have a good day.